Once again, it is the minister Kev of the body of Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied from God our Father, from Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know, sometimes it's good to get outside, amen. It's cold, amen. It's easy to be inside and just turn on the heat, amen. But just think about Jesus Christ. He said he didn't have no place to lay his head. And the apostles were following him. They was always outside. It's easy to preach from the comfort of your home. But it's sometimes you got to get out unto the elements real quick. And let's get into this Bible study, amen. We're talking about God the Father, the Son of God. In the Holy Ghost. Amen. A lot of times you hear like Catholics and people who have been influenced from the Catholics say God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, let me put you on breaks right there. That, that, that phrase, God the Son, it, it, that phrase is not even in the Bible. Just keep it Bible. Just say the Son of God and it won't be a problem. Let's keep it in the scripture. But let's talk about a few things, even the Godhead. Amen. A few things that need to be talked about. Hopefully I can take my time, amen. We're living in the time in this world. Of course, you can see it's the last days within the divided states of America, you know, uh, with all of the violence, people taking to the streets. But hey, let's take to the streets for the right thing, amen, to get uh, all of this indoctrination in our schools out of the schools. God created male and female. Ain't nothing in between, amen. Let's stand up against these mandates, stand up against homosexuality, adultery, fornication, everything that's wrong that the word of God is against. Let's stand against that, amen. So it's time for the people of God to stand up, amen. We've been, been living way too comfortable, amen. So let's get into the word of God, into all those things that I had talked about. Let's, let's get into it. Luke, the third chapter. I hope you got your King James Version of the Bible, amen. Luke, the third chapter, uh, and at 22, and it says, And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Now, let me stop right there. We're talking about the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, the spirit of Christ, the comforter, all titles for the Holy Ghost. Now, notice it says that the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove. No, the Holy Ghost is not no dove. So the Catholic Church and all these churches got the, got the little dove trying to portray the Holy Ghost. Man, stop all that imagery and all that idolatry. You know, the Catholic Church is full of it. Notice how it said the Holy Ghost which is the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, it descended in a bodily shape like a dove. Look, that's God. Holy Ghost is God. That's Holy Ghost business. If he wanted to descend in whatever shape, whether it's the shape of a man, the shape of a dove, that's God's business. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. That's upon Jesus Christ. Now, now, now notice, let, let's back up. Where, where are we at here? Let's go to Luke 3, 21. It says, now when all the people were baptized, notice it says baptized. That was important. They were baptized in the John baptism, a baptism unto repentance at that time. It came to pass that Jesus also being baptized. Look right there. Jesus being an example. Yes, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved is very important. But you got to do it the right way. The one baptism, amen. Do it the Bible way. All the apostles. Like I always mention, we're baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. And it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was open. Of course, you know, the Holy Ghost uh, descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven. Now, what voice is that? That's God the Father. That's God the Father's voice. So, so here we see. We see God the Father. We see Jesus, who represent the Son of God. And we see the Holy Ghost, which descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. So what's wrong with believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God when the father lets you know? Even by way of the scriptures, and you can read in various scriptures. See, I believe the witness of God as opposed to the witness of, of man, because the witness of God is greater. And what did he say about his son? This is my beloved son in whom I will please. So there you go. You see God the Father represented a man, a voice that came from heaven. God the Father, the Son of God, he was baptized by John the Baptist, a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Amen. And a voice came from heaven. God the Father. The Son of God and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape. Amen. If you don't believe me, let's 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 flip real quick even to 
to what Matthew in the Gospel of Matthew, Amen. And let me pick up uh, Matthew around the third chapter. Let's go about sixteen. Matthew three sixteen and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. There you go. That's the Holy Ghost. God the Father, the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost. You can see all three. Remember, they are one. That's Bible. They're in unity. Of course. Amen. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. So like I say, he, the Holy Ghost, which is a spirit, can take on any bodily shape it wants. Amen. In this case, like a dove. And lighting upon him. Notice, the Bible says that God is light. And in, and in him is no darkness. So you see the spirit, which is God, amen, like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So if you don't believe me when I say that Jesus Christ is still the son of God, believe the word of God, the scripture, amen, that I just read. Amen. Now, let's. Turn our Bibles, amen. I hope by now you have your King James Version of the Bible, amen. Because we're talking about spirit versus flesh. Flesh, blood and bones, or even flesh and bones. Now, Jesus Christ is flesh and bones. That's not spirit. Now, granted, he has a spiritual body or a glorified body. But that's not a spirit in the aspect of of Luke the 24th chapter and what I'm about to read amen Luke 24 and 39 but let's 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 bump up to 37 Luke the 24th chapter and at 37 it says but they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit a spirit can take on any form that it you know by God permission that it want you know by God permission a spirit you know can of course, the Holy Ghost can take on any form. They suppose that they had seen a spirit. Now you have unclean spirits. Those are disembodied spirits. Those spirits don't have a body. See, the body, the Bible talks about one body and one spirit. The one body, that's in representation of Jesus Christ who had the body. Now, when he came on the scene through Mary, he had a body of flesh and blood. Or you can say flesh, bones, and blood. Let's just say flesh and blood, you know, just like, you know, the natural man has a body. In us, we have a body of flesh and blood. But you see, after his resurrection that we're going to read, he had a body of flesh and, blown, uh, of flesh and bones. No, he wasn't a spirit. Now, you can say he had a spiritual body or a glorified body. Fine. And that's the same way that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, ascended on into heaven. So there shouldn't be no confusion uh, when we're talking about spirit and we're talking about body. Verse 37 of Luke 24, but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. The Holy Ghost doesn't have flesh and bones. Jesus Christ is the one in the spiritual body with flesh and bones. Amen. Because I just read it. So we have that example. But you can't come along and say that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God has flesh and bones. No, the one body is Jesus Christ. Today he has a body of flesh and bones. He doesn't need a body of flesh and blood. He already had that, a body of flesh and bones, as we see right here, if we keep it in the scripture. Amen. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me, and see for a spirit have not flesh and bones, as you see me have. God is a spirit. He don't have flesh and bones. That's the son of God. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And what's interesting about his spiritual body or his glorified body, there's still the remembrance of his crucifixions on his hands and on his feet. Amen. 
when we receive a glorified body, we're not going to have scars. I seriously doubt we'll have scars. But Jesus Christ, amen, you know what he went through. And I thank God for that reminder. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. So you see that this glorified body can even eat food. Amen. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be filled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he, he there, uh, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name. There you go. If you're not saying the name, you're just saying the titles, you're not doing anything. You're not baptizing. Let all things be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's how you get repentance and remissions of sins that should be preached in his name. So you're really not in Christ if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because it represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that you can walk, walk in the newness of life. The reason you don't understand is because you're not in Christ yet. So we'll pray for you, amen. Among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Well, let's keep reading. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So he's talking about the promise of his father and that promise was the Holy Ghost that was poured out on the day of Pentecost amen so keep in mind we're in complete amen in Jesus Christ you got water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ why because we're complete in him because when you say Jesus Christ you're saying it all that's still the name of the Jesus father is the name of the father because the name given by the angel Gabriel was Jesus amen we are complete in him. So let's turn to Colossians 2 and 8. I'll start at 8. It says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So don't come with your philosophy. Show me in the scripture, amen. Don't come with your philosophy that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. Don't come... Uh, with your philosophy that Santa Claus is flying through the air with Rudolph. That's man-made deceit. Hey Amen. You should know that by now. Don't come with no philosophy and vain deceit. It says after the tradition of men, Christmas and all of these false holidays. And, and, and keep in mind, look, every day is Thanksgiving. You know, I'm thankful every day. Amen. I don't care about these man-made Holidays, it's a waste of time. Black Friday, man, come on with all that mess, man. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So, this whole ministry, at the end of the day, I talk about many things to get people talking, amen. Talking about real life events, it's about Christ. Now, we're talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, for in Him dwelleth all the fullness of. Of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Jesus Christ is the one who was made both Lord and Christ. He's in charge at the right hand of the power of God. That's why you're complete in him. That's why you got water baptized in his name. You're officially in Jesus Christ, amen. And you understand it. That was the baptism that represent the death of the Son of God. You understand it. Some of y'all ain't even in Christ yet, man. Not just the death, but the burial and Who resurrection. It? it says, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We're talking about the Godhead. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Your pastor don't have all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in him, but Jesus Christ the Messiah does. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
So in other words, all the fullness of the Godhead in a body was in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. The Godhead bodily. It doesn't say he's the Godhead. But it says in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So all the fullness of the Godhead bodily was in Jesus Christ. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Let me keep reading. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. It's about the circumcision of the heart. Amen. It don't matter if you're circumcised in the natural or not. We're talking about the circumcision of your heart. Amen. Buried with him in baptism. Let me stop right there. Buried with who in baptism? Oh, Jesus Christ, the son of God, whom the baptism represents. So you ain't even been buried. You've been buried with the, with, with the father uh, and of the son and, and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy. Even if you say that before you baptize somebody, but let them know that name. And that name is Jesus. Get it right. Buried with him in baptism. So, so a lot of y'all want to fuss with me, man. You ain't even buried, been buried with Christ through the baptism. Because you didn't give the official name. How are you honoring the son of God? If you can't even say his name during your baptism, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. So Jesus Christ, so God, amen, Jesus Christ being our high priest, amen, we look to him for help, amen, in time of need, amen. Even so, so God, through his uh, 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 spirit, through his Holy Ghost, amen, can work that operation in our lives, amen, so that we can be raised from a life that represented death, amen, out here partying and clubbing and, you know, rioting and all the mess that the world does. Come on back to the Holy Scriptures, amen. This is Minister Kev. I had to give a quick teaching. Getting on out the way. It's getting cold. The fire don't went out. So time to go inside for a moment. Amen. Until the next time, y'all be blessed. Down to earth, real preaching. Don't forget to subscribe.